Amen. Amen. Certainly feel free to check out the church website uh, for any announcements you may have missed. Uh, also, you can go back on Facebook and watch. Uh, and also call the church. So three ways if you miss something, uh, go back, watch it again on Facebook. Call the church. Uh, we're usually here from 10 a.m. to at least 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, or certainly you can reach out to Sister McCray. And we go from there. Amen. 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 At this time, we want to uh, prepare for our health and wellness moment. Uh, and then, actually, let me do my announcements first before I forget. Amen. Uh, today ends our 40 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, we give God praise for that. I want to challenge us. I want to challenge us uh, that remember Jesus said that if you cast out an unclean spirit, he goes to and fro seeking another place to, to settle into. And then he, when he finds no rest, he comes back and finds that same home that is empty and nothing else is filling it. He says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Dean Cook. I'm going to go get some homeboys. And he goes and gets seven other spirits. And the last state is worse than the first. For those of you who don't get spiritual things, let me put it like this. If you stop eating sweets, don't go on a binge tomorrow. You lost eight pounds. Before you know it, you're going to be 16 heavier than when you started. I can't get no help up in here. So what I want to suggest for us, those of us who have done this fast, don't just rush back to what you gave up. Don't just rush back. Ask yourself, do I really need that in my life? I promise y'all. Just so I have discipline, I'm extending my McDonald's fast for one week. Y'all ain't gonna help me up in here. Quentin, I wanna make sure I got discipline real, real motherless. So what I'm gonna do, even though I can't, y'all know, if you don't know me, I love McDonald's. Y'all pray for me. I gave it up for Lynn. I'm giving it up for another week just to show myself that I got discipline. I finally can fit some of my suits again. God be praised. Amen. I don't want to be up here messing up again. Amen. Y'all thought? Amen. I ain't going back. Look at somebody say, I ain't going back. I ain't going back. Amen. You done quit smoking, quit smoking. You quit drinking, quit drinking, or at least quit drinking as much. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. You done cut back on sugar, done cut back on soda, whatever it is. I want you to think about, have you seen a benefit in your life since you've been doing it? Remember this moment and hold fast. Amen? Amen. Again, we're looking for Sunday school teachers, for children's church, young adult classes, and adult classes. If you're interested, please give your name to Sister McCray or see Deacon Chambers. Uh, also, our outing for Lil Hilton Rawls, my little brother, uh, on Saturday, April 6th, we have a bus. We have a bus. Uh, his father has prayed and asked for that at least 500 youth would be there to help celebrate uh, Lil Hilton and his wow. rites of passage. Uh, we got at least 30 kids I can name. We got enough to fill up the bus. So I'm asking those who can. We're taking care of the bus. Uh, we're going to try to make sure it doesn't cost too much, if anything, for you. Uh, so if you're interested, please, uh, if uh, you are a youth or your parents, please give your information to Sister Yvonne Burroughs, who's right here. Stand up, Yvonne. They can see you. Adults, please give your name to Sister Constance Bryant. Just wave, Sister Bryant. Amen. Uh, we will be leaving at 8.30 on Saturday to head to New Jersey. It's going to be an awesome time. I will be participating in the service. Uh, Lord gave me a word. Amen. It will be a full word, but I got a word. Amen. And then we want to be uh, reminded on first Sunday, first Sunday, I gave you all opportunity. Get all your hair appointments done. Amen. Schedule your cuts. Your shaves. Make sure you go to the cleaners, get your crisp white shirt. Amen. Y'all know you got the white and the off-white shirt. I know I ain't the only one. Y'all like to help me. Amen. Make sure you got your good stuff. We're doing church pictures on the first Sunday throughout the month, month of April. I want to be doing church pictures. I want to start off with church leaders, church leaders and officers. Uh, and then throughout that, we're going to be working with our photographers, doing headshots. How many of us could use a better pro uh, uh, profile picture? Headshot, amen? I know y'all tired of seeing that picture with no facial hair all over the internet. I need a new headshot too, amen? Amen, you need one too, amen? And we're grateful. So we're gonna get started with that next Sunday, uh, first Sunday, excuse me, 
uh, and then first Sunday again. I think that's pretty much it. I want to do something today. This is a uh, preview for next week. I've been trying to get uh, as best as I can the church in administrative order. Uh, we have talked about the structure of the church, got the pastor, we've empowered, we're working with stand up our ministerial staff, both of them. Let's thank God for Minister McCants. Let's thank God for Minister McCants. Let's thank God for Brother Munderland. Brother Amber Munderland as well. You all may be seated. We got our deacons. We got our new walking deacons. All our new walking deacons. Our new walk, just our walking deacons. Our walking deacons. Let's give God praise for the ready to pray. LeVar Hulk, Gerald Kittens. Amen. I want to ask all of our deacons to stand up. All of our deacons to stand up. All of our deacons. Amen. Come on, we get things in order. We get things in order. I want to ask you all may be seated. Our deaconess, our new deaconess, the new deaconess to stand. Matter of fact, our new and our, our existing deaconess. They one group. Uh, our existing deaconess. We got two. We got these three here. Our existing and our new deaconess. Come on, let's thank God. We got ministers. We got deacons. We got deaconess. Now it's time for our last thing to get the house in order. We gotta consecrate some mothers in our Lord Jesus Christ Church. I've been praying over these names. Been praying over these names. I'm gonna call out these names now. And on the fifth Sunday of this month, our senior Sunday, we're gonna do something special. We're gonna carve out a portion of the service to consecrate our mothers in the Lord Jesus Christ Church. Amen. Our first one, posthumously, posthumously. Uh, just uh, Sister Eleanor Kirkland. Yeah. We're going to officially consecrate uh, Eleanor Kirkland as a mother uh, in our Lord Jesus Christ Church. And then we're going to consecrate as a mother Leela Jamison. Yeah. Mother Jamison, we're going to make it official. We're going to consecrate Mother Leela Jamison. We're going to consecrate Mother Cleo Richardson. Mother Cleo Richardson. She's not here. We're keeping her in prayer. We're going to consecrate Mother Clara Jurgen. Clara Jurgen. She's not here today. We're going to consecrate Mother Gladys Warren. Gladys Warren. These two are here today. We're going to consecrate Rosalie Brighton. Rosalie Brighton. Amen. Last but certainly not least, she's here today. We're going to consecrate. Ertheline Tennant, Mother Tennant. Come on, Mother Tennant. Come on, let's give God some praise. Amen. And, and, and Mother Sally, I'm going to get you next year because you just became a deaconess. So we're going to get Mother Sally and, and, and a few others uh, as we do that. But let's give God some praise. We're getting the house in order, getting things in order. Amen. So with that being said, as we get our church in order, we want to get our wellness in order. Want to get our lives in order. Let's prepare now to receive. Did y'all know we got a, a, a for real doctor in our church, y'all? Come on, let's put our hands together for Trina Pruden as she comes. Amen. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Last time we talked about stroke. Last time we talked about stroke. Um, stroke is just a brain thing. uses oxygen to let the dirt in. Um, there's an acronym that's used for BFAB. B stands for balance. When the person who's starting to lose their balance, that's a sign. Um, the E stands for eye. Are you blurred vision? Blurred vision, vision, a little bit off. F. The F stands for face. Part of the face goes start to droop or maybe a when you smile, that's what you know show the chance of it starts to droop. Part of the face starts to droop. Um, next one is the A, it stands for arm. One of the arms won't be able to raise one of the arms. So one arm won't be able to make it. And the S stands for speech. Oh, the words start to blur. The speech. Or is it blurry or they slurring their speech slur. And the last one starts for time. Time to call 911 so they get their hospital on time. And they live their lives. Sometimes our actual our lifestyle smoking, they always want to start smoking. And diabetes, stuff we can get under control to actually lower our risk of stroke. And that's what I want to say. Thank you. Man, amen. We thank God for that. We all should know the signs. 
we should know the signs. Let's get ready to receive leadership of our women's ministry for 2024 as they come with our special women's presentation. And we'll be on in service. Let the church say amen. Person and myself. Um, as you know, March is Women's History Month, and we just would like to take the time to acknowledge and honor two women of the Mount Ali Baptist Church. Um, they played a role, significant role in their family, as well as their community, and here at Mount Ali Baptist Church. Okay. The first woman that I would like to acknowledge, born in Georgia, but lived in Brooklyn most of her life. A graduate of Girls High, New York Technical College, Meg Evans College, and Columbus University Teachers College. A mother of seven, nine grand, six great grand, Attended Ma Ali as a teenager and became a member a little later. Well, she said much later, but um, um, her positions in Ma Ali Baptist Church was the, for the following summer vacation camp, Sunday school teacher, after school program, children's church, chairperson, pastor's wife night, and brother Leroy Creighton's day. Youth director, formerly crowned Miss Ali. While employed, she was voted as who's who among the top 10 teachers in America. Now, she enjoys opera, horse racing, arts and crafts, international traveling um, and also the church in church he's a pulpit office and supply club member I present to you our lovely sister baby now <laughs> photography too, right? <laughs> Good 
Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. You want to say anything? Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Sister Stella, she said, I'm taking off my shawl. I want to be cute today. Y'all going to see my whole church outfit. Come on, Sister Stella. Let's give God some praise for life and legacy. That Neesmith family, we are a better church because of this family. We're a better church. Sister Stella has had to play mama sometimes. So we thank God for her, her faithfulness, her tirelessness. We thank God. I know I got one deacon right here. Deacon Reed wouldn't be who he is without Sister Stella and that family. And we thank God. So one more time, let's put our hands together and receive our very own Sister Stella Broadway. until we were 12 by Reverend Brown. But we came in here, I was five years old. And thank you so much. I bless my heart. Amen. So we may be looking at one of the longest members in the history of Mount Island Baptist Church. Amen. Come on, get your picture. Get your picture. Come on. You didn't take your jacket off for nothing. Amen. Thank God for Sister Stella. We celebrate her. I mean, you know, it's important every now and then just to take the time to recognize those who have done so much for the life of this church. What I love about the members that we celebrate about Mount Olive, they, all, they didn't just make an impact inside the four walls of this church. We've got people who've been touching lives across the years in their buildings, in their classrooms, in their outreach. Mount Olive, we're such a blessed church. And we give God praise. Come on, one more time, let's give God some praise for all of our celebrants. I want everyone who can, every, every sister that we recognize during the month of March, I'm hoping that you could be here on the fifth Sunday 
so that we can all take one good group picture together. Is that okay, saints? Will you, will you encourage me? And then let's try to get all of our, our celebrants out, and we want to do one big group picture for all of those. Amen? Amen. All right, saints of God. Well, it's offering time. It's oh, y'all said it like you almost believed it. It's offering time. It's I cannot grow. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over and poured out. We're excited, saints of God, that God is blessing. I want to tell you that uh, during the month of January and February, our giving has stabilized and been consistent. You know what that means? More people are tithing. More people have trusted God and are tithing. I'm looking at new heads shake all every time I ask that question. And I'm just excited to see what God is going to do based on what we've already seen God doing right now. Anybody in need of a financial blessing right now? Anybody? Somebody said everybody, everybody. I forgot where I was. Amen. Amen. As we sit in that, as we sit in, in that place, as we sit in that place, I want to challenge us. I want to challenge us. God reward, God responds to our seed. God responds to our seed. I want to tell you, saints of God, I'm in need of a watermelon blessing. Y'all know what a watermelon blessing is? You, you notice that that little black seed, little brown seed, gets put into the ground. And as time passes, what I put in the ground doesn't look like what comes back to me. Notice that that small little watermelon seed made that big old green and white, yellowish, depending on what kind of watermelon you get, where you from, amen. But made that big old watermelon from that one seed. This is what I love about God's process. That that same watermelon that produced all those seeds started from just one seed. Your one seed produces many seeds. What you sow today is not going to look like what God blesses you with. Now I want you to think about this. If God does it in proportion, in measure, if I need a watermelon blessing, I need to put a watermelon seed in the ground. And I want to challenge us today. If you've been tithing, God bless you. I'm not asking you to do anything else but just to keep doing what you've been doing. You've been tithing. For those of us who haven't accepted that challenge, I want to tell you and challenge you, invite you to step out on faith today. Maybe you say, I can't tithe. I want to challenge you to go above and beyond what you normally do. This ain't no normal day. I'm challenging you to go beyond what you normally would do and watch. God work. Here's my promise. If God don't work it out, if you put in a worse situation, come see me and we're going to see what we can do about it. Amen? Amen. 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 Now listen. Now listen. Don't go, go out by no Louis Vuitton for Easter next week. And then come to me on the 15th. I can't pay my rent, Pastor. I tithed and I bought my Louis. Now, do, do the tithe and we'll work on the Louis. Amen. I'll get you on a plan to get you there in Jesus' name. Amen. Just love to make you smile. Let's get our best gift in our hand. There are four ways to give. If you're like me, you give online. Four ways to give on Cash App, Give the Fire, Zelle, or by envelope. Just want to get ready now as we go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you even gave us the technology of ways to give. We ain't afraid to give to Amazon. Don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. Lord, we ain't afraid to give faithfully and consistently to Netflix. Or McDonald's. So now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, help us, oh Lord, just to trust you. 
Lord, we, we, we laugh and we joke, we have a good time. But Lord, we know that this is still worship. Yes. At the end of the day, this is a demonstration of our trust. Not in the preacher. I ain't asking you to trust me. I'm asking you to trust God. Yes. But we thank you for this worship opportunity. God, that what we give you ain't going to look nothing like what you give back. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God who opens the windows of heaven and pours out blessings. We don't have room enough to receive. Lord, we're in a state right now where we're asking for that don't have room enough to receive level blessing. Lord, we see our brothers and our sisters in need. Lord, we're just asking to be in a better position to be able to help somebody else take care of our parents, our loved ones, those who have done so much for us. So Lord, this ain't no prosperity prayer where we just want money for money's sake. But Lord, this ministry needs the resources to do work in this community. Now, Lord, I ain't asking for it from outside. I'm asking that you bless the members of Mount Island. Bless them with promotion. Bless them with people who owe them money. They never thought they'd get it back. Let them just start sending back money in the name of Jesus. We're praying for favor on business loans and business ideas. And Lord, we're praying right now in the name of Jesus that you would bless, that we can continue to be a blessing to this church as this church is a blessing to Brownsville, as Brownsville is a blessing to Brooklyn. This is our prayer, Lord. It's all about you. It's in Jesus' name we do pray and say amen, amen, and amen. Starting in the balcony, goes, march around you and stretch your legs.
Amen. I see him going. I see him going. I see him going. Amen. 
God been good to you today? Has God been good to you? Come on, come on, come on, y'all. I didn't say if I've been good to you. I didn't say if Joe Biden been good to you. I didn't say if Eric Adams been good to you. I didn't say if Darlene Neely. I said, but if God has been good to you. Come on, you ought to have a reason just to tell them thank you, thank you, thank you. For all that you've done. Amen. Let's give it up for Brother Carlos and Brother Earl. That's good right there. Amen. That's good. I'm going to ask the ushers and the deacons to help me. Amen. As we get ready to pull up our slides, Brother Julius, as we do this, just want to make sure everybody has them because we're going to celebrate the Lord today. Amen. When I say Hosanna, we're going to wave the palms in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So, all right, now I got one deacon who responded. All right, the rest are coming. Deacon S can help out too as we do that. Now, on our prayer loan on Friday, we said we were going to sing a song. Who can tell me the song we said we were going to sing? Victory is mine. As the deacons and they pass out the palms. Come on. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today.
today is mine. Let the church say amen. 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 As we get into the word today, we know that it is the triumphal entry. It is Palm Sunday. Today, I want to recreate a picture for us. We want to give us a few points and we'll head home, all right? Our text today comes from Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19 title of our sermon is One Thing I Won't Do. One Thing I Won't Do. Amen. Yes. It's a few things I won't do, but it's at least one thing I won't do. One thing I won't do. Amen. Let's go to the Word of God. Let's read together. Those who so choose, I'll be reading from the New King James Version in case you don't have a Bible or on your phone. It should be on the screen around the sanctuary. On the screen around the sanctuary. By show of hands, how many of y'all think we need bigger screens up top? All right. Let me say it again. By show of hands, how many of y'all think? All right, I know who to call and ask money for right after this. We're going to so all pay for it. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. That's been on my heart, but I want to see if other people felt like it, it, it's needed as well. Amen. I want to do that. My, my vision real quick while we do it, my vision real quick, y'all, is to level off the stage and put a big projector up here, like a, like a, like a either LED or a projector. So, so for the sermons, you can see the illustrations and we can do all that. So that, that's what we're working on next. Amen. And we'll get some bigger screens until then. Amen. 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 Anybody got a discount? Anybody got a family and friends discount? At Best Buy? Y'all ain't gonna help me. Y'all know Best Buy, BJ's, Renner Center. Amen. All right, I think we're ready now. I think we're ready now. Luke chapter 19. Luke. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. It's time for the word of God. As we focus in, that God will speak to us today prayerful, being thoughtful. Lord, speak to us. There's a lot going on. Lord, we need to hear from you. Luke chapter 19, verse 28 through 40 from the New King James translation. When he had said this, he went ahead going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet that he sent two of his disciples, saying, go into the village opposite you, where as you enter, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to them, because the Lord has need of it. So those who went there, so those who were sent went their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, Why are you loosing the colt? They said to him, The Lord has need of them. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the colt. They set Jesus on him, and as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. Why they praise them, y'all? For all the mighty works they had seen. For all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees called out to him from the crowd, Teacher, 
Tell your disciples to be quiet. To shut up. They're making too much noise. Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent. Yeah. I grew up in the King James Version where we say these rocks. New King James says these stones would immediately cry out. Thanks be unto God for the word of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Lord, bless our time together is our humble and sincere prayer. Illuminate our minds. Shine a light down on my soul is my humble prayer. You would remove whatever should not be. In this moment that these, your people, may hear from you. Hide me behind the cross. Use these lips of clay. The Lord, collectively, it is our prayer that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, who is our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus the Christ's name, we do pray and say, Amen. 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 And amen again. Amen again. I want to begin by I have discovered, you know, in life, there's some things that you just got to do. Some things you don't want to do. And every now and then, some things arise in life where we have to make a definitive decision where this is the point of no return. This is boundary. This is, this is where I will not be pushed. I will not be broken. And every now and then, you got to arrive at that place. Where you say, it's just one thing I won't do. Can I help somebody this morning? Amen. This afternoon, can I suggest for you one thing that you should not do today? Is let no rocks. Cry out for you. Now, now, the reason you ought not let any rocks or stones cry out for you is because the rocks and the stones don't know what the Lord has done for you. I wish I had some help up in here. The rocks and, and the stones, they don't have your testimony. They don't know like you know what the Lord has done for you. So what is it? What is it about about this scene as it unfolds, as we read at the end of Luke chapter 18, when the Pharisees, the haters, the religious leaders of that day tried to get the people to be quiet, to be still, and they said, Jesus, rebuke your disciples. And Jesus said, if these should keep silent, immediately the stones would cry out. I want to talk about this picture, and at the end, I hope, give us some reasons why you shouldn't let a stone cry out for you. Why you shouldn't let a stone cry out for you. Let's go uh, to our slides real quick. Now, I ain't going to keep you long today for the, I say that every time, amen. I know. But y'all keep coming back, so it must not be too bad, amen. 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 I got time today. I got time today, amen. <laughs> I want to paint a picture, if I can, that we must first begin with the origins led up to this text and this scene, the Passover. For it is laying out the scene six days before the Passover. We know that the Passover is what we'll celebrate next week. Easter. The resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Here as we are situated in this moment, that there is a shadow looming over the life of Christ. Yeah. That shadow is the cross, not the too distant future. And we read these scenes with full recognition that Jesus is entering the defining moment of his ministry. Yeah. Lord, the purpose for which he has come to these terrestrial shores. Come on now. Come. The crowning achievement of the Christ as he is lifted up on the cross at Calvary to give his life for you and for I. But thanks be unto God, before Jesus had to hear the terrible shouts of crucify him, 
Before he had to hear the terrible shouts of, he saved others, but he can't save himself. My, my, my. Before he had to see the waving fingers and hands and the smirks on people's faces, the haters and the naysayers as he stood there, as he hung there suspended between heaven and earth, thanks be unto God, before the cross every now and then, the Lord will give you a triumphal moment. I want to help somebody, saints of God, that, that I have just discovered that before you go into your darkest moment, uh, that God is going to shine a little light uh, to illuminate your path, uh, to remind you that while you're going through, remember I'm the one who sent you to it. Because I sent you to it, there's the promise, the blessed assurance that I'm going to be there with you while you go through it. I thank God that every now and then I hear the shouts of triumph before I hear the shouts of crucify him. Yeah. Every now and then we get to the mountaintop and pinnacle of praise but have to, before we have to go through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. But not only was it preparatory for Jesus, mm. but it also was a part of a prophetic pronouncement. Yeah. That it had been declared that the one who was to come, the Messiah, I got excited. Let me go back. I was talking about the origin of it. I got. I know I love the Lord. I get excited. I'm talking about the Passover. The Passover. Now the Passover. Remember that the children of Israel were just like black folks in America, in bondage for over 400 years. Come on. Declaration. The promise had had come that after 400 years, I'm going to rise up, raise up a deliverer who will go down to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Here it is, this like the African-American experience, the Hebrew experience. And the Hebrews of, of that day, they, they had to go through the stresses and strains of slavery by the hands of a foreign king. 400 years, but then God decided that enough isn't enough. Anybody yeah. glad that, that God has an expiration date on your trauma and your pain and your difficulty? Yeah. That, 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 that although I'm going through it right now, I, one of the things that gets me waking up every morning is that this might be the day that what I'm praying for, what I'm believing God for, and you gotta have that reason when you wake up in the morning that yesterday may not have been what I wanted it to be, but I thank God that weeping may endure for a night, but if I can just make it to the morning, just make it to see another day. I got a sneaky suspicion that everything uh, is going to be all right. God saw the plight of his people. Yeah. Come to tell somebody, God sees your plight. Come on, come on. God sees everything that you're going through. Uh -huh. And when you're ready, God is going to send the deliverance that you need. Yes. The bush is burning but not consumed out of it. He rubs the voice of God telling Moses to go down to Pharaoh and go down to Egypt and tell him, let my people go. And here it is that God is, y'all know God loves to flex every now and then. I wouldn't want to serve a God who didn't flex every now and then. Every now and then to let the world know that I'm still in control. That, that, that I know who the president is. I, I know who the mayor is. But you do know that I am the king of kings. And I am the lord of lords. And I am the prince of peace. Uh, matter of fact, they, when they talked about me, they said his name shall be Emmanuel. Uh, his name shall be the prince of peace. Uh, and the government shall rest upon his shoulders. Uh, you got to know that God uh, is still in control. And every now and then, God likes to flex to show the world who's still in control. Didn't yeah. you know that Egypt had ten gods? Okay. Mm. So God said to put the ten gods in check, I'm going to bring ten plagues. Oh, for every god, you got a plague. <laughs> and for every plague that you had a god, my god worked out and overruled. Here it is, saints of God, the tenth plague, which sets up the triumphal entry. The tenth plague was the final plague. Yeah. It was the one that broke the grip of Pharaoh. Mm. That ten plague was the plague where the firstborn, uh -huh. the firstborn saints of God, Come on. would have to die. Yeah. But God had sent a word. 
Said, I tell y'all what to do. If you want the death angel, when it's sweeping through the streets of Egypt, going high and low to pass over and to, to pass you by, I tell you what you do. You get the blood. Thank you, Deacon Cook. Show him, Deacon Cook. Come on, show him, Deacon Cook. You get the blood of the Lamb and begin to post it over your doorpost. So when the death angel comes by, they'll say, this house is covered by the blood. And the death angel passed by, and at the end of the night, Pharaoh lost his son. Yes, he said, enough is enough. Y'all got to get up out of here. They make their way to the promised land that God institutes so that they never forget. So they never forget. Never forget their slavery. What have we instituted as black folks so that we never forget? We got Juneteenth now that just became recognized. Yeah. 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 What do we do so we never forget our time of slavery? Mm. So that as God has blessed us and promoted us, we don't turn around and start treating people like people treated us. Yeah. So that we don't turn around and forget how far the Lord has brought us from. So that we don't forget, we got to rewrite and tell the story, and we got to quit just listening to the oral recitation of it. But every now and then, we got to open up a book and put some words on the paper. Let me tell you why, because the Bible says, write the vision and make it plain so that those who run may run with it. Black folks, if we're going to rewrite the vision, we got to put a plan on paper, and we all got to be plugged in and locked in, because I don't know about y'all but I'm sick and tired of every time I turn on the TV it's another black or brown body that is slain and their blood is spilled on the streets of the city and I've come to tell you it's direct consequence that we still ain't been liberated from the slavery of America's Egypt that we still ain't got all the way free cause we won't come together and say it ain't about me it ain't about a crab in the bucket mentality that if you win, I win. And when you win, we all win together. It got to be a mindset that says high tide raises all the boats. That I want to be blessed so that you can be blessed too. Because when you get blessed, I don't have to hate. I don't have to worry. I know that it may be delayed, but not denied. And I'm going to start praising in advance. Because if God blesses my neighbor, I can shout because that just means that God is in the neighborhood and it is no secret what God can do if he did it for another he sure enough can do it for you it's time saints of God for us to bring this thing together that when we come to triumph on Sunday Palm Sunday it ought to be a moment where we at least reflect come on now and remember how we made it over. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all, I, I got a good one for y'all. I was watching Netflix last night. Watching Netflix, there's a new movie out called Shirley. Y'all ever heard of Shirley Chisholm? Unbought and unboxed. Unboxed and unbothered. Y'all remember Shirley, but, but it was something about it that we're in an era and an age where we've got to resurrect some of those champions of yesterday and yesteryear when we're looking at politicians who ain't got no backbone who'll say one thing on Saturday and another thing on Sunday. They'll say one thing in the temple and another thing in the mosque. But we got to raise up a generation of leaders who say enough is enough. It's time for my people to get up and get out. It's time for us to advance. It's time for us to go somewhere. Now here it is, triumphal entry. Let me press. Let me press through. Now this year, if you lived, this was a tradition, if you lived in celebration of the Passover, if you lived in a close regional proximity to Jerusalem, when the great feast happened, you were obligated to go. Here it is. You got to imagine that this was a year like no other year. Come on. The rumors and whispers that begin to spread all throughout Judea. 
Jerusalem bubbling over with excitement, electricity in the ear as the questions loomed in the mental skies of the masses. Will Jesus show up? Now, you got to imagine, saints of God, that it was a tradition where everybody had to come. How many more folks do you think came this year? Because word had got out that the religious leaders were trying to kill Jesus. Come on now. Y'all know how it go down. Everybody came. Because people love trauma. Y'all ain't going to help me up with this. Say, I heard it mm. on the grapevine. Y'all yeah. yeah. know how, how news begins to travel that the death threats, that there was a, mm. uh, uh, that there was a, 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 a uh, uh, there was a death wish, death warrant out for Jesus. Mm. Here it is, saints of God, as they are debating and wrestling what's going to happen this year, that word begins to spread that Jesus is going to come. And I believe the word begins to spread through Bethany. If you look at John chapter 12, it says that Jesus, on his way to Jerusalem, stopped in Bethany. Bethany was the place of the home of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. You remember Lazarus, don't you? Lazarus is the one who had been dead. Jesus learned and delayed four days in his going to heal and resurrect Lazarus from the dead. And the Bible says in John chapter 12 that many of the Jews started believing in Jesus, not just for the sake of Jesus, Jesus, but because of Lazarus, who had been dead, now he's alive. So all of a sudden, people are coming, not just because they want to see Jesus, but they want to see the one who was dead, who is now alive again. The Bible says, I'm going to push through, but, but the Bible says that, that so many begin to gather and they spread the word that they begin to follow Jesus to Jerusalem. Now, I want you to picture this scene where there is a caravan of people following Jesus who have traveled on their way to Jerusalem through Bethany so that they can see Lazarus on their way to Jerusalem. So you can imagine as the crowd has gathered, the caravan is following Jesus. Word has begun to spread that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. As Jesus is making his way into the city, the whole of city, the whole of the city is in a commotion and in an uproar because Jesus, the King of Kings, is coming. Jesus, the one who opened blinded eyes. Jesus, the one who allowed the lame to stand up and walk. Jesus, the one who walked on water. Jesus, the one who fed the multitudes. Jesus is coming. So the crowd said we got to go meet him. So as they go and meet Jesus, you got to look at this. Go back to the text. I wanted to set up the scene. There's a usual excitement in the air. The enthusiasm is bubbling over. Everybody wants to see. And then the scene starts with our text. When Jesus had went head to Jerusalem, the first thing that he did, he assigned two disciples. Let's go beyond the scriptures to our, our, our four, four last slides about preparation, presentation, the progression of praise and worship. So you argue this text. First preparation. First preparation. Now here it is, thanks to God. That the people came out because they heard of what Jesus had done. How do they hear if we don't tell the story? Y'all pray with me? Now, when we tell the story, that is in preparation to get the multitudes to come out. But have you ever discovered that what you see of the main event is really small in comparison to all of the preparation that went into the presentation for the event to go smooth. Y'all praying with me? Now here it is, saints of God, on this triumphal entry, this day when we ought to come together to remember our culture, remember our history, to celebrate our Christ, that before we even get here, the first thing is that we have to be focused on the 
preparation. The preparation, the preparation. Look at the text, if you will, that it says he sent two of his disciples, saying, I'm sending you where I'm about to go. Are y'all praying with me? The preparation. I'm sending you where I'm about to go. And when you get there, there is an assignment. There is an assignment. That in order for God to do what I believe God is going to do in this season, all of us have an assignment to prepare the way. Yeah. All of us have an assignment. Look at the text. He said, two of the disciples say, go into the village opposite you, where as you enter, you will find a cult tied on which no one has ever said. Now, this was significant because he had to come riding in on a cult in fulfillment of Old Testament scripture. But here's the important part, that there was a fulfillment of a scripture that couldn't happen without your preparation, yeah. Yeah. without your participation. That there's a part of the story that God is going to tell in somebody's life, but you play a part because you have to prepare the way for what God is about to do. Now, here it is that in the move of the preparation, you got to have the faith that says, I'm going to do something that don't make a whole lot of sense. Are y'all reading what happened? How many of us, if we were those two disciples? Jesus, well, you know I had a little run-in with the law a few years ago. I'm on probation right now. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. Jesus, you want me to go to a place I ain't never been and go take this donkey Come on, help me somebody that don't belong to me. And you know I already got some issues from back in the day. Y'all ain't helped me up in here. But, 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 but there was something about their willingness and readiness, even in the face of an assignment that didn't make sense. Don't you know, saints of God, that the preparation that God is getting us to, he's trying to grow up your faith by getting you to do things that don't make sense. And a part of your faith elevation and your faith growing up is a part of the preparation that ain't about you. It's about what Jesus is about to do in somebody else's life. Are y'all praying with me? He sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village opposite you, where as you enter, you will find a cult title which no one has ever said, loosen it, bring it. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say, because the Lord has need of it. See, the preparatory work that we've got to do is go release some people. Go let them know that although you've been tied up and tied down, I've come with a word that the Lord has need of you. That God is looking for you to do something for the kingdom. I promise we go into the shout, preparation, preparation. Next slide, next slide. After the preparation, we got to get ready for the presentation. The presentation. What's the presentation? Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw somebody else's clothes. They had a fundraiser. They had a clothing drive. No, their own clothes. Watch this. That after we go out to prepare the way, we got to be willing to present Jesus. Yeah. Now, in the presentation, we can't present Jesus just any way. We got to present him in the way he wants to be presented. Now, this, this is a point. I need y'all to pray with me through this one, that we got to be careful in this season that we presenting Jesus the way he wants to be presented. And in order for us to present Jesus the way he wants to be presented, we're going to have to unveil ourselves. We're going to have to take off some stuff. We're going to have to go in our pockets, make some sacrifices, and be willing to surrender and to sacrifice that somebody else's life can be better. Here it is, saints of God, that somebody was trying to discredit Jesus. The religious leaders were doing all that they could to discredit the work of Jesus. Don't you know that this world every day is doing everything it can to discredit the transformative work of Jesus Christ in your life? Yes. Every day of your life when you make a change, there's somebody. I'm just waiting on them to slip up. They just acting holy during the 40 days of prayer and fasting. He's going to be back at McDonald's next week. I can't wait and see. 
Y'all ain't praying with me. There's some people watching and waiting to discredit what God has assigned you to do. But you got to say, I'm going to do it anyhow. I'm going to do it anyway. If it requires the last that I got, to, it's nothing compared to what he did for me. On the cross at Calvary. I'm going somewhere. I'm trying to set it up. So first of all, it's about the preparation for the presentation. Next thing, next thing. Now, when we prepare the way for Christ, the presentation, people were trying to discredit him because the prophets, the prophecy said that he had to come as people laid out their clothes on the road, as they laid out the palms, and they put their clothes on the donkey. So if our life is not fully transformed and we're not fully obeying and doing what God says, all we're doing is creating an opportunity for somebody to doubt Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To discredit the Bible and what God has said. And we got to do everything we can to protect that. Amen? Amen. Preparation, presentation. Go back to the slide. We're almost done. We're almost done. One o'clock. I told you I'd get y'all out by one o'clock. Every Sunday. I'm going to try. Now, this is why it's important. This is why it's important, right? That after the preparation, the presentation, we see the progressive expansion of the crowd. Yeah. I want you to look at it. I can't go back to the text. Notice that it says that Jesus first assigned how many disciples? Two. Two. two disciples. Now, the two disciples, when they brought the donkey back to Jesus, it says, and they took off their clothes and put them on the donkey. Yeah, yeah. Then as they went out, the Bible says, then many folks started getting involved. And many folks start putting their clothes out there. And before you know it, a few, no, two turned into a few, a few turned into many, and before you knew it, it turned into the whole multitude. Y'all see where I'm going? That, that when we do our part, look at how God does his part. All it takes is two disciples who make up their mind, I'm going to do what the Lord said. And when I do it, I ain't going to do it halfway. I'm going to give it all that I got. If it requires the clothes off of my back that the fulfillment of the scripture may come to pass, I'm going to give all that I got to, that God can do what he want to do. But notice, saints of God, if we can just get a few people who make up in their mind that I'm going to do the work of the master. I'm, I'm so glad that it don't take everybody, but all it takes is a few somebodies who make up in your mind that I'm going to do the work that God has called me to do. I know I'm trying to close right here, but I got one more revelation. I got one more thought. I told you when I started, uh, there was one thing that I would not do, um, and one thing that I will not do uh, is let the rocks cry out for me. Uh, and I come with good news for somebody um, who may be wondering right now. Uh, I hadn't always been prepared the way I should. Uh, I hadn't always been the best presentation that I should, uh, but I got good news for your saints of God. Julius, go to Hebrews chapter 11. Chapter 11, verse 11. As I got one thing for you to shout about, one reason why you can't let the rocks cry out for you. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, the Bible says, as Julius pulls it up, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, uh, it's on the text. Uh, it should be in what I said. Uh, are you saying that it ain't there? Uh, that's all right. Because uh, I got the Bible. Uh, the Bible says uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse 11, uh, by faith, uh, Sarah. Y'all get it in a moment. Uh, by faith, uh, Sarah herself. Uh, also conceived 
seed um, and had received strength um, to conceive a seed um, and she bore a child um, when she was past the age um, because she judged him um, faithful who had I told y'all it was up there um, Hebrews chapter 11 um, it wasn't always about um, the reason I've got to shout because uh, I hadn't always started the right way uh, but can anybody thank God uh, that God was patient enough uh, that God was faithful enough uh, to hang on in there with me uh, while I hung on to him uh, notice the Bible uh, in Hebrews chapter 11 uh, gives us the faith hall of fame uh, read Hebrews chapter 11 uh, next time you get a chance uh, and you'll see the great names of faith uh, but one of those names uh, that was mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11 uh, is the name of Sarah uh, and y'all sitting there looking at me uh, like you don't know what I'm talking about uh, just give me about two minutes uh, and I'm going to break this thing on down uh, and I'm going to tell the Lord thank you uh, and if you want to shout you can shout too because uh, this is the triumphal enemy in triumphal entry uh, now why I get excited uh, about Hebrews 11 uh, 11 and 11 because uh, if you look right here uh, it would look just like uh, Sarah had always been faithful uh, Sarah had always got it right uh, like Sarah had always believed uh, but I'm so glad uh, that the word of God uh, is left on record uh, brother Julius uh, do we have Genesis 18 uh, in Genesis 18 uh, that's Sarah's origin story uh, and here she's faithful uh, and here she believed God uh, but I want to talk to somebody uh, who had a start like Sarah uh, read Genesis chapter 18 uh, verse 6 through 15 uh, when Sarah heard the word uh, when the angel showed up uh, and said by this time next year uh, your blessing is coming uh, by this time next year uh, your healing is coming uh, by this time next year uh, your miracle is coming uh, the bible says uh, go to the next verse uh, so you don't accuse me uh, of making it up uh, notice the bible uh, says that sarah was listening listening in the tent door which was behind him now Abraham and Sarah they were old well advanced in age and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying after I've grown old shall I have pleasure my lord being old also look at what's happening God said this time next year it's going to turn around Sarah started thinking about all the reasons why she couldn't get pregnant why the miracle couldn't happen why the deliverance wouldn't come so much so that the Bible says she started laughing so much doubt that it sounded ludicrous it sounded crazy it sounded insane so she started laughing but I thank God that her laugh didn't disqualify her for what God was about to do her faith didn't let her miss out the Bible says around verse 14 Verse 13, and the Lord said to Abram, why did Sarah laugh, saying, surely I, I said, I shall, shall I surely bear a child since I am old. I hear the Lord telling somebody, I hear the Lord asking that question. Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for God? Y'all want to know what I want to do? When I look back over my life and all that the Lord has done, you don't know like I know. 
what the Lord has done for me should have been dead should have lost my chance when I laughed when I doubted when I was afraid but is there anybody that can testify can testify in the sanctuary he been too good to me for me to let a rock cry out I shouldn't be here right now I don't look like what I've been through but God has been too good for me to let a rock cry out for me so I got one question is there anybody that can open up your mouth and think on the goodness the goodness of the Lord and what he's done can you open up Open up your mouth and tell them thank you. Thank you. testimony. I'm talking to somebody. God gave you a promise. God gave you a vision. God gave you a dream. You felt it. And even though you wanted it, maybe you were afraid. Maybe you doubted that it was possible. Looked at the circumstances and situations. We doubted. We laughed. But I want you to hear God asking the question, is there anything impossible for me? I want you, I want you to hear now. I want you to hear now. Are you ready? Are you ready to see what God had in store? Are you ready? Now don't fool me now. Don't make me waste this. I'm about to, I'm about to give you the key. Are you, do you really want it? Are you ready? Are you ready? Notice. Notice, saints of God. And even though she cried, even though she doubted, even though she laughed, she got one thing right. She went back home. She got together with Abel. And she did her part so that God could do his. This is the good news, thanks to God, even though I didn't get it right at first. Even though I've been delayed. Lord, you told me to go minister on Pickett Avenue and Rockaway, but 
But, but for years, I was hanging, doing dirt on picking and rocking away. But, but, but Lord, I felt you telling me to turn around. But Lord, I thank you today that you didn't disqualify me, that you didn't cancel me, that you didn't kill me, that I didn't die, and I stayed alive long enough to get another chance. If this is the hope that I pray that you feel today, that Sarah made it to the Faith Hall of Fame. But she didn't have no Hall of Fame star, Marsha. It don't matter how you start. I'm trying to tell somebody right now. God, God said, just finish strong. Just finish strong. Just finish strong. Just keep on believing. Keep on holding. Keep on trusting. It ain't over yet. I hear God saying to somebody, as long as you got breath in your body, it ain't over yet. It ain't over. It ain't over. The reason I'm excited, I'm closing here, I'm closing. We done. We about to go home. We about to go home. But Lord, I praise you today that it ain't over yet. You can't appreciate this. Anybody ever showed up to an appointment late and because you were so late they wouldn't let you in? Anybody ever been delayed and it was something that you wanted? But because you got there late, you couldn't get the service, couldn't get the blessing, couldn't get the benefit. But I thank God for Jesus. For what he did for me. Jesus stuck his foot in the door and held it open for me. Jesus nudged his elbow in there and said, I ain't going to let you close the door until my baby get through. Son, my daughter. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, we thank you. They were praising you for all they had seen you do. Today, Lord, prepare us as we prepare the presentation of you. That's what the world got to see. They ain't looking at us. Our picture, our image ain't going to make no difference. But help us, Lord, be willing to take off our coats, take off our whatever it takes, take off yesterday, yesteryear, the garments of our past. That your word may be fulfilled. That people may be blessed that the hopeless may find hope. Those who are teetering on the edge of a decision for suicide would now have hope, would have new light, new inspiration. Lord, we want to be used by you in this season. You've been too good to us. You ain't kept us through everything you kept us for just because. Lord, I know the story. Some of us, for real, should have been dead. Some people just be saying it, but, but I, I know there's some folks under the sound of my voice. That's our for real testimony. We ain't praying. Should have been dead and gone. It's our real testimony, Lord, should have been in jail. Our real testimony, Lord, should have been had our bodies full of bullets. There were some knives that somebody had our name on it. But, Lord, you've been a protector and a keeper. So Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Well, Lord, sometimes it ain't been other drunk drivers. Let's tell the truth. It's been us who've been intoxicated behind the wheel. But you kept us, Lord. Ain't none of us perfect, Lord. We wouldn't be here right now. But for the fact that you kept us. So, Lord, we know you didn't keep us just because, but you kept us on purpose. Yes, sir. On purpose. Come on. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, hear our humble prayer today. Thank you, God. Let us lay hold Come on. of that for which you laid hold of us for. Come on. Let us see Ooh, Lord, thank you. that for which you saved us because of what you saw in the future. Ooh, God. Let us possess that which you died for us to possess. Come on. So 
our prayer today, oh God, of this triumphal entry. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, God. for another chance. Now, Lord, help us to act on faith. Help us to recognize that the rest of my life starts right here, right now. I believe in you, God, that you're birthing something in my life. I got to go, pun intended, get busy. I got to go. I got to get active. I got to move. So, Lord, we pray right now for the supernatural discernment, the revelation. Show us the door to walk through. Show us the assignment. Let us hear your voice clearly. That we may do what you're calling us to in this season. Because, Lord, we already believe. But it is our preparation, our presentation, our praise that's going to get somebody closer to you. And that's what it's all about. We say thank you now, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus. We do pray and say amen, 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 and amen. Come on. The doors of the church are open. If you want to join today, you just lift your hand up. I'll come walk to you wherever you are. If you want to give your life to Christ, if you want to join this church, or you just need prayer, you just need prayer today. You just need prayer. The altar is open. Is there one? Brothers, come receive our brother. service would be Tuesday in Kansas City. On Tuesday we were uh, in Langston Hughes houses. Mother and brother Deshaun. Keep him in prayer. Samaya and Sanaya, the two 19-year-olds. 
want to keep them in prayer. That funeral will be Saturday. I'll be preaching that funeral. Those who can on Wednesday at 11, join us at Mike's Youth Houses. We want to be there to support. I'll do a calling post for more specifics about that. But I'm just led to go to the Lord in prayer now. We go. Lord, we thank you that you are the lifter of our heads. Lord, we thank you that you hear us every time we pray. We thank you that you love us too much to not hear us. We thank you that you love us knowing everything about us. As we go through this season, which is the ultimate demonstration of your love on the cross at Calvary, the truth is it should have been us. But out of love, you died for us. So Lord, we thank you for that love today. The love of sacrifice. Lord, if you would give that, why would you hold back anything else that we need if you gave your best gift? Your greatest gift, your son. Lord, in the name of Jesus, help us get to the place where we really believe you in your word. Believe that you are a keeper, a provider, a sustainer, a healer, a deliverer. Lord, we thank you as we look around this sanctuary. From young to old. Believing. Because of what we've seen. Lord, we thank you that you're real. I don't care what nobody else say. They can talk about the church. Say whatever they want. But Lord, we thank you that, that, that we know you to be real. We don't know where we'd be without you, Lord. So Lord, for this time that we have spent together today, just say thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor, God. Pray that we all are reminded it ain't over yet. Yeah, right. It's too soon to quit. Lord, I thank you that the day we have heard and were reminded. The devil told me this. I know he be telling other folks. There were some things that I know I believe I heard from the Lord. The devil said you messed it up. It's over. It's too late. Might as well forget about it. Lord, we thank you for this word that tells us that it ain't too late. That it ain't over. That unless God has canceled it, the devil in hell can't stop it. So Lord, help us. Somebody's healing is on the line. It's been delayed, but not denied. Help us to hold fast to the faith. Help us to move based on the word we heard. Meet every need at the altar, every prayer request, as only you can. And we thank you now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we do pray and say amen, amen, and amen again. Come on, let's give God... One more hand clap of praise to the sea. The grace now will come with information about brother. Come on, we got another brother, y'all, who said he's he coming to the church. Amen. I saw him sitting next to somebody, but I ain't going to ask no questions or say nothing about it. Amen. Amen. Let's receive now. Gregory Jordan, who is coming to Mount Alley to be baptized. I appreciate Deacon Good's excitement. Y'all think they good? Amen. We ought to be excited. We're excited because the Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice over one soul. Amen. And as our brother has come to be baptized, brother, we're so excited. Uh, you, 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 you moved in here like you fit and belong already. Amen. He on that prayer line. Oh, so it's just been a matter of time. Amen. So we, we thank God for uh, the fruit of the prayer line. The prayer line has brought more fruit. Amen. Amen. We're excited to get to know you, my brother.
he has already confessed Jesus Christ and believes in him, but he's saying he has a choice to be rebaptized. Amen. So he's coming on his Christian experience, but he will be rebaptized. Amen. He's already confessed Jesus Christ. My spirit just already knew it about him, so I just wanted to ask and confirm. Amen. 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 So, Brother Deacons, what would be your pleasure if our brother comes on his Christian experience and to be baptized? I so move, Brother Pastor, that Gregory Jordan be accepted on his Christian experience, and after the successful completion of the new members class, he'll be given a right of the fellowship and accepted in the church with all rights and privileges. So second. It's been moving properly second. All those in favor, show by the usual voting sign. Any uh, abstentions? Any opposed? No, because ain't nobody mad but the devil. We're not voting on your salvation, just your acceptance into the local church. Come on, let's give God some praise. We got another soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. All hearts and minds are clear. Uh, we're going to have to go back and get some more information. Listen, God is good. And all the time... Now, if all the time God is good, I thank God that God got time to wait on me when I wasn't. Because he knew that it was an investment worth making. I'm telling somebody under the sound of my voice, we silence every lie the devil has ever told. You were an investment worth making. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard, nor has it entered to the hearts and minds the great things that God has in store. Standing all over the sanctuary, it's Palm Sunday, Triumphal Sunday. One last time, if you got them, let's wave them for the Lord. We'll be back same place, same time, 1045 next week. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you and shout, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hosanna! Bless your name, oh God! In Jesus' name, go worshiping, go in peace, go in power! And in abundance in the year of four, and let the church say, Amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna.